Okay, well, I'm going to invite John up, John Chapman, to come and do our reading for us. Thanks, John. Good morning, church. The reading is from Matthew 14, verse 22 to 33. Comes under the heading, Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. Buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, <clears throat> they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked onto the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and called him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when he'd climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Thanks, Amen. John. Thanks very much, John. Uh, one of the most interesting things uh, in my last previous role as an army scripture reader uh, was assisting the chaplaincy on what they used to call um, character development lessons. Um, basically, they used to give the chaplaincy all the lessons that no one else wanted to teach, um, which is fair enough. Um, things like dealing with death, uh, the right to kill. Um, and one of them was called the realities of war. And there were a few different aspects uh, of teaching the realities of war, um, one of which was to take our young recruits, not that young, some of them, uh, the School of Infantry, we were taking young men and women uh, from about the ages of 18 to 35 was the oldest uh, recruit I ever had. And he was quite an interesting chap. Uh, he was a recruit who had a young daughter who had a baby while he was in training. So he became a grandfather at 35. Wow. And um, so we, I actually trained a grandfather to become uh, an infantier. Um, but one of, the, one of the aspects of realities of war is we used to take a coachload of soldiers uh, down to the National Memorial Arboretum. Hands up who's been to the National Memorial Arboretum. Okay, just a few. I honestly urge you as much as possible, if you can do a trip, I think they do coach trips there, to the National Memorial Arboretum, it, it is absolutely amazing. This time of year, autumn, is probably a fantastic time. It, it does what it says on the tin, there are lots of trees there, so it's an arboretum, but it's, it's where our National Memorial is for this country, and there are just amazing memorials all around. You need a day and a half there, at least. Uh, I, when I first went there, there was a few memorials, and they didn't have a proper cafe, which upset me a little bit, um, but now it's an all singing, all dancing, uh, place and there's a huge restaurant and it's just worth going for the day set off early and spend the whole day there and if you if you have mobility problems they have little buggies that they'll drive you around there's even a little train thing that goes around and it's just an absolutely phenomenal place I've still not taken Amanda I keep promising I'll take her one day so maybe in the next few weeks we'll go there but we used to take um, our soldiers down to the National Memorial Arboretum and a small package uh, was put together for them uh, including, at the very end, a small service in a chapel that they have there. Um, so we would take them down 
and they would meet various people who would take them round on memorials. Um, one of which was a triple amputee who had just come back from Afghanistan. Um, one of which was a, an older veteran. Um, there was me, the chaplaincy, and a couple of other chaps. And we'd take them round and we'd give them a whole day um, at the National Memorial. And one of the memorials there is um, something they call the Shot at Door Memorial, which really was, um, that really brings it home to, to people, um, where young soldiers uh, were unfortunately killed for desertion. And there's a whole memorial there um, with lots of these soldiers being exonerated as well. And we didn't know about things like PTSD and things like that back then. And then after that, we'd take them into the chapel. And usually, uh, depending who was there, it was my job to give an address uh, to the troops. And this is usually the last time I will ever see these troops. These are troops that have gone through their whole training. They've come towards the end of their training. And this is their last sort of outing before they go off to battalion. And this was with the infantry. Um, so lots of these guys will go to their infantry battalions. They have their pass out parade. So it was a good opportunity for me to give them one last address. And I used to read a few scriptures, but the one I used to read more than anything was the one that we've just read, um, that account in Matthew of Jesus walking on water. And there's a whole reason for that. And it's all to do with Peter. Um, I don't know what you think about Peter, but I love Peter. Uh, to me, I, I feel like I'm a bit like Peter sometimes in the scriptures. But this, is, this account has just happened after the feeding of the 5,000. And the first thing to note is that Jesus actually puts them in a storm, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Um, Jesus put them in the boat to go to the other side. He went off and prayed. And then they get straight into this storm. And it's a fierce storm. And we've been talking about this open door. We've been looking at the version in John. Um, but there, there are the disciples. They're all fishermen, or most of them are fishermen. And they're absolutely petrified anyway, which shows you that it must have been a pretty terrible storm. And then all of a sudden, in this account, at the corner of their eye, they see Jesus doing something incredible. He's walking on water. And I absolutely love that. I love the fact that Jesus walks on water. He walks towards the boat. They're not too sure of who he is at first. But Peter, the real rabbler, I would call him, he was someone that was always in trouble, I think, notices that it's Jesus. And he does something incredible. He looks at him and he says, if it really is you, Lord, let me come to you. And Peter does something extraordinary. And whatever you think of Peter, he's the only human being on this planet who has ever walked on water. He gets out of the boat and he starts to walk on water. It doesn't last very long, but he still walks on water. First lesson, I'm going to take... There is a book out there called If You Want to Get Out the Boat. If you want to walk on water, you've got to get out the boat. And we had a minister and his wife uh, who introduced us to that book. And uh, every now and then, this particular minister would ring me and Amanda up and home and say, how do you fancy walking on water this evening? And our hearts would sink, because it would usually be a job that we didn't want to do. But if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. You can't stay in your comfort zone. So there's Peter, who reminds me of a young soldier, enthusiastic, says, right, Lord, I'm going to come to you. So he climbs out of the boat, and he starts to walk on water. And he gets a little way, and then he obviously realises the sort of situation he's in. He's in a storm, and it's a bad storm. It's a really bad storm. And he starts to notice that he's in a storm, and all of a sudden, he starts to sink. When he recognises the realisation of his circumstances, he starts to sink. And he sinks, and he sinks, and I imagine his head goes below the waves, and he starts to drown, I imagine, and he panics. But then he does something really interesting. And these are the, this is the reason I used to share this story with the soldiers that I was working with. I imagine he holds out his hand in desperation and he calls out these words, Lord, save me. Three simple words, Lord, save me. And before you know it, Jesus has got hold of him. They're back in the boat. And the storm is calm. Absolutely phenomenal. 
One of the reasons I used to share this with soldiers, especially at this particular meeting, this was the last time I was going to meet these guys. And it was my last time to share the gospel with them. And I used to look at them, these usually about 40 to 50 in this small chapel in the Arboretum. And I might have read Psalm 23. Because I, I, I would ask them the question, who here is tired? And they're all tired. These are young men and women but they are absolutely exhausted. They've just done six months of infantry training. If they've joined the parachute regiment, they've done, also done what they call P Company. They are wrecked. These guys are wrecked before they even go to battalion. So they all understand what it is to be tired and exhausted. But the British Army is excellent. I've talked about this before, at replenishing people. You know, the army marches on its stomach. I still do. and I'm not a soldier anymore. That's why I probably need to lose a bit of weight, but there we go. But these guys, you know, they can be replenished quite easily. But there is one chance that they get to battalion, they get sent somewhere, and before you know it, there's no replenishment. They're on their own. And this is a soldier's lot. And I used to say to them, if you ever find yourself in combat, no matter what you've heard from me over the last six months, whether you believed it or not, I say this, I would urge you, please, if you ever find yourself in combat and you think that you are going to die because that's the reality of soldiers, then please will you shout at the top of your voice, Lord, save me. And what I meant by that, and I used to explain, I say that you might, you might not be saved physically, but I want you to remember these words, men, that when you're in combat and the chips are down and it's looking grim, remember the Lord. Remember Jesus. Remember that he can save you. Interestingly enough, you know, they want to bring secular um, sort of chaplaincy in. Um, and one of the beautiful things about being in chaplaincy is, and I've worked with lots of chaplains that have held soldiers' hands on the battlefield when they've been dying. And they've been able to give them a spiritual rest to at least encourage them through prayer. And that's why the, the chaplaincy do such a great job and scripture readers because we are there to give them a spiritual rest. But I just wanted these guys to know that when the chips are down, you need to call upon the Lord Jesus. You may die, but if you've called upon the Lord Jesus in your heart, truly, you will wake up somewhere far better, which is heaven. And that used to be my last parting words to these guys. I used to find it quite difficult, because I'd see their young faces and I knew their reality. And the reality is, there's one or two of those that are in the Arboretum with me that day that are no longer with us. One of them I remember distinctly, a guy called Matthew Talbot, who was joining the guards. And he came, and he shook my hand after that, and he told me where he was going. And he was really excited because he was going to go to Africa to do anti-poaching duties. We even do that as a British army. We are peacemakers. And Matthew Talbot heard those words and within a few months he was killed on active duty. So now I go back to the Arboretum and his name is on the wall. And I remember him and lots of the others. That was for soldiers. And it used to be an odd sort of scripture to read but I just wanted them to remember the words, Lord save me. And these are the words I want you to remember as well. As I said this morning, we don't have to go far to find conflict. There is conflict everywhere. There's even conflict within ourselves. And there are some days where, even as a mature Christian, I struggle. And when I struggle, I remember these words. Lord, save me. One of the reasons I like the song Oceans is because it talks about our heads, just about being above the water. It talks about treading water. I don't know if you've ever done any sort of swim test where you've had to tread water and, or you've been in trouble in the water. I mean, it, it can be really frightening. And life is like that. Just because we become Christians doesn't mean everything's going to be plain sailing. Uh, you'll never hear me preach health, wealth and prosperity. I'll tell you that now. It's hard. When you become a Christian, you enter into warfare. Jesus knew that the disciples were going to be in a storm. But he also knew 
that if he wanted, he could stop the storm. And his actual words there are, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Now, I don't know about you, but I continually find myself in storms. Um, You don't have to go far to find one. And sometimes it's like being in a huge ocean with waves piling over you. So what do we do when we're in those sort of times? Well, what we should do is do what Peter did. He was drowning. He was in real deep trouble. But he knew exactly what to do. He stuck his arm out of the water and cried out those three amazing words. Lord, save me. And what did Jesus do? Did Jesus, what would I have done? I'd be like, just leave him a little bit longer because it's quite funny. No, Jesus isn't like me, thankfully. You know, he looked at Peter, he immediately grabbed him, saved him, got him out of the boat, and then he calmed the storm. So I don't know what your life, how it's going at the minute. Um, I face, seem to face storms all the time. That's me being honest with you. And I like to think that I'm resilient and uh, pride myself on resilience and get me through uh, these storms. Um, but you know what? There are some times when a storm starts to take me and I begin to drown just a little bit. And these are the times, these are the times when you maybe have to get on your knees and hold your hand out and say, Lord, will you save me? Even if you're a Christian, Lord Jesus, I am in a storm. I trust in you. I trust that you can get me through this. Maybe you've put me in the storm, Lord. But Heavenly Father, will you pull me through to the other side? And it's exactly what he did with Peter. My hope is that some of those soldiers that I spoke to down at the National Memorial Arboretum, and I saw about 12,000 go through there, so there's quite a lot, that some of those, even maybe Matthew Talbot, would have remembered those words and he would have called out to Jesus. One of the interesting things about evangelism is we don't always see fruit for our labour. It might just be a part of someone's journey. But these are words that we can encourage people with as well. So if you know anybody who is struggling, tell them this story. Tell them about a struggling fisherman who thought he could walk on water. And he did, just for a little bit. Tell them about this fisherman that walks on water, who Jesus saved and who continues to save today. I put my trust in Jesus 20 odd years ago. And um, the first thing that I received was peace, peace, a peace that passes all understanding. In some of the other accounts of the storm, Jesus tells the waves and the wind, he says, peace, be still. So if you are going for a storm in a minute, then my friends, call out to Jesus, call out to Jesus, ask him for your help, his help. Put your arm up, recognise your circumstances, You know, we can change our circumstances, but that doesn't always change anything. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. It's greener where you water it. And we need to water it with the Lord, through his word, through prayer, through being together. This is fantastic this morning. We are a church and we are a family and we look after each other. And we need to do that through Jesus, to be in love with Jesus. Jesus saved Peter. He put him in the boat, he calmed the storm, and my friends, let me tell you something, he can save you as well. One of the reasons I used to say to soldiers, if you cry out to Jesus, Lord, save me, you might still die, because that's the fact. My job at the time wasn't necessarily to make sure that soldiers survived in battle, it was to make sure that their souls did. And that's what I care about more than anything else, is souls. I'm a soul seeker. And like Peter, I'm a fisherman. And I don't know where your soul is today. I pray and hope that your soul is already secure in Jesus Christ. But if it's not today, it's not too late or too early. If you feel that you're not saved today, then call out to him. Say, Lord, save me. If you are saved today, 
and call out to him again and say, Lord, save me from what I'm going through. He might take you through the storm a little bit more, but you won't go through by yourself because he will hold you with his righteous right hand. Jesus has obviously got a super grip because he pulled Peter out of the boat. He pulled Peter out of the stormy waters and the next thing I knew, they were on that boat. Call out to Jesus. Call to him. He will answer. One of the other lessons that we used to teach was called Tactical Exercise 2. And I used to do that with my very good friend, Phil Burrows, chaplain. And um, one of the scriptures that we used to read out to the soldiers on TACX 2, Tactical Exercise, was that one from James, where it says, if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. It was fantastic to do this with soldiers. But now I'm working with a different type of soldier. You, the Christian soldier, the soldier who goes through life and whose job it is to express this hope to other people. So this is what I leave you today. First of all, call out to Jesus, ask him to save you and then draw near to God because my friends, he will draw near to you. He will draw near to you. Today is all about remembrance for me, especially and some others. And the one thing I want you to remember more than anything else is those words, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of hope that you give us. We thank you for this account, Lord. We thank you that, first of all, Peter got out of the boat. And as Christians, we are called to sometimes get out the comfort zone to get out of the boat. If we want to walk on water, if we really want to experience Christianity, then we have to sometimes get out of the boat. So I pray for anyone here, first of all, who is ready to get out of the boat, to walk on water a little bit, to assist with things in the church or ministries. I pray for them now, Lord. And also pray for those here today that feel like they're drowning Lord, I know exactly what it feels like to feel like you're drowning sometimes in the storms of life. Sometimes those waves can be ferocious and we can feel like they're overtaking us. Lord, for anybody who is in that position today, I pray that you will save them from that storm, that you will put them back in the boat just for a while so that they can recover and remember and reflect and be ready to re-engage. And Father God, I pray for those today who don't know you. Maybe this is the first time they've heard about Jesus. This Jesus who came to earth and died on a cross to take away our sin. Allowing us to have a relationship with God. A saviour who rose again three days later. And promise us, promises us that we will too if we entrust our lives to him through repentance and faith. Lord, it is never too late or too early to reach out our arms this morning and say, Lord Jesus, will you save me? Make, secure my soul, Lord. Allow my soul to be yours. The flesh will disintegrate and die. That's something we've all got to go through. But our souls will remain forever. And I pray that everybody's soul here this morning is firm and secure in the arms of Jesus Christ, where one day we can worship the living, conquering Saviour for eternity and we'll feel real peace. Not just a peace that passes all understanding, a peace that we will have never experienced in our lives before. That peace of being in eternity with you forever. Father God, thank you for today. I pray that our worship has been a blessing to you. It's been a sweet aroma to you. Bless us today, in Jesus' name.